name off of the trees tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for the victories. to Fifth Street to be with the saints here. Amen. So Fifth Street, thank you so very much for this invitation. Us to join you in certain. It is uh, always an honor and a privilege to be with the Bishop Roll and to his lovely wife. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Amen. Down the years. And uh, we're so thankful for them and it's such our pleasure to be with you tonight and I'm also very honored and I count it a blessing uh, that my the wife of my youth is here with me today. Hallelujah. 22 years. Praise God. And, uh, we're so thankful for her. The uh, scriptures declare he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. And obtained favor from the Lord. And those of you who knew me before I got married, you know that Rosalind has sure helped me. Hallelujah. And I certainly thank God for her and to all of the pastors, to our moderator tonight, Pastor Ramsey. Thank God for you. Let's put our hands together for her. Pastor Natalie Richardson, thank God for you. Thank God for the ministry. To Reverend Marilyn, who's out there tonight, thank God for you. Hallelujah. And to all of you who are in your respective places. Of course, to the members of the Resurrection Life Fellowship Church of God. Hallelujah. Thank God for you. And, uh, for allowing me to serve you the way you have all of these years. Thank God for you. We're going right to the Word of God tonight, the book of Luke 18. And I want to take the time to make sure I say what I'm supposed to say. I know the word is going to bless us tonight. Brother Justin, always a blessing to see you. And to our minister, Brother Chester, Brother Delilah. Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. And uh, a familiar passage of scripture. But I sense in my spirit this is what the Lord would have for us to speak. All right. Luke 18, verses 1 through 8, and when you have it, if you'd say amen. amen. And it reads like this, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray, and not to faint. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming that she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. 
Lord, and a blessing to the reading of his word for the edifying of our souls. I want to speak to you for a few minutes tonight on the topic, the strong prayer of God's elect. The strong prayer of God's elect. I speak to the body of Christ this evening. I speak to the elect of God. Amen. All of those under the sound of my voice today, because everybody uh, thinks that they are the elect of God, but I want to tell you everybody is not the elect of God. I know we live in a time where, you know, people say I am what I say I am and, you know, feel like they can uh, be what they want to be, but the elect of God is a set, called out group of people. Yes, it is. Amen, amen. They are a people who have heard the call of God, yes. but not only who have heard the call of God, but who have responded in the affirmative. Amen. Amen. The scriptures say that many are called, amen. but few are chosen. That word chosen refers to the elect. Many boast on the fact, oh, I know I've heard the call. Well, that's, that's wonderful. But after you've heard the call, then you've got to say, yes, Lord. Amen. So those who have heard the call and those who have responded in the, in the affirmative or who have said and continue to say, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Many of us said, yes, Lord, one time 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Or 10 years ago, but look to your neighbor and elbow them because it's late. You don't have to do a lot of elbowing because it's late. Tell, tell them, are you still saying yes, Lord? Mm -hmm. Because that's what's, that's what's important. You've got to still be saying yes. If you are continuously saying yes, then you are the elect of God. What does it mean to be the elect of God? It means that you are God's chosen. You are God's ecclesia. You are God's called out ones. And he talked about the church, that he built his church. That was that ecclesia, that group of chosen ones, that group of called out ones. As I move hurriedly along here, there are many, many benefits to being a part of God's elect. Uh, one person said that membership has its privileges. But there are no privileges like the privilege of being God's elect. Amen. Your theme uh, tonight refers to one of those privileges, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. Not because of my family name, not because of the degrees I've earned, not because of the money that I have, but simply because I am the elect of God. Hallelujah. He whom he did foreknow, he did predestiny. Hallelujah. That's why we know all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. So many, many benefits to being a part of God's elect. But tonight, as I move hurriedly to the main point, one of the greatest benefits about being a part of God's elect is that your prayers are not in vain. Come on, say with me like you're happy about it. My prayers are not in vain. Yes, there are some people that are praying, and they're praying uh, in a futile manner. But when you are the elect of God, your prayers are not in vain. I am God's elect, and God hears my prayers. I want you to say that with me. I am God's elect, and God hears my prayers. I've sensed in the spirit and I want to tell you today we have not seen the real magnitude of what real prayer by God's elect can do. Many of us still look at prayer as something that is a waste of time or as something that people do when they can't do anything else. But God is saying, I want to remind you that there is nothing more powerful in this earth than the prayer of my elect. The prayer of those who I have called and who have said, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to say with me again, I am God's elect. And he hears my prayer. 
Hallelujah. Psalms 91 verse 15 says, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. Amos chapter 5 verse 4 declares, For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Somebody say amen. Amen. This is why in the book of James, James said in chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith. And we're going to come back to that. Somebody say to me, the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Hallelujah. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed for the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. First John chapter 5 verse 14 says it like this, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. Amen. So when you hear these scriptures tonight, you may be saying, Pastor Hardy, what is the point? We already know all of these things. The enemy uh, would have, or, or the spirit of the Lord would have for me to remind you tonight not to allow the enemy to make you think that your prayers are ineffective. All right. All right. Uh -huh. I don't care how long you have been praying. I don't uh, care what you have been praying about. I don't care what the obstacle or the challenge is in your way. God hears your prayer. Daniel chapter 10 verses 12 through 13. As we remind ourselves, Daniel was a part of God's elect. And he prayed and fasted for 21 days. And the answer still did not come. Anybody prayed for an extended amount of time. And it seemed like things did not change. Right. Seemed like the door still did not open. Still like the enemy still presented himself. 21 days and the answer still did not come. But God spoke to Daniel after that time and said, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But he said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one twenty-one days. But though Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. In other words, as, as David or as as Daniel was praying. There was warfare in the heavens, but God heard his prayer from the first time he prayed it. I want you to find God's elect next to you, and I want you to encourage them again, no matter how long you've been praying. Tell them that no matter how long. God hears your prayer. I come to break the back of discouragement over the intercessor tonight. I come to break the back of discouragement over all those who are praying consistently the will and the word of God. But seems like the answer just won't come. When you don't see the answer to your prayer in the physical child of God, you have to know God has already worked it out in the spirit and it won't be long before it shows up in the physical realm. Hallelujah. Come on, just say with me out of the mouth of faith. Tell them God has already worked it out. Hallelujah. Think about that challenge. Think about that obstacle and tell yourself God has already worked it out. Come on, tell the believer that is next to you. God has already worked it out. The Spirit of the Lord says it's time for the saints again to pray the prayer of faith. 
Mm -hmm. Come on, say with me. I got to pray the prayer of faith. Every prayer that you hear is not a prayer of faith. Some of us are praying, but we're not praying the prayer of faith. It's so hard to get along. My Lord is so All right, now see. That's how some of us pray. We go to God. I'm climbing up. So when you all come on. Yeah, that's terrible. That's not, come on. That's not the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is not a complaint. So us, when we go to God, we're talking about how terrible it is. How things are happening. God, you know they're trying to get me. Devil on my track. God, you know if it's not one thing, it's another. God, you know how the pain and, and all of this. Listen, that's not the prayer of faith. God says, I want to remind you again, it's the prayer of faith that saves the sick. What is the prayer of faith? Number one, it's insisting. The prayer of faith is, number one, insisting on the will of God. Whatever the situation is, the prayer of faith insists on the will of God and asks that God's will prevail on earth as it does in heaven. You remember what the Lord told the disciples when they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Come on. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. That's a prayer of faith. Whatever I am going through, I want it to conform to the will of God. I want the will of God done in my home. I want the will of God done in my marriage. I want the will of God done in my body. I understand what God's will is, and I'm praying for that will to be done. The prayer of faith is spoken about again in Matthew chapter 16 when he told the church or told the disciples, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Right? And really, the, the, the way that's worded, it's, it's really, the literal translation is the reverse of that, saying it, uh, loose and bound, binding and loosing are legal terms. And, and what he's saying, if it is permitted in heaven, then you can permit it on earth. And if it's illegal in heaven, you make it illegal in earth. Come on, that, that's the prayer of faith. If we know healing is allowed, is permissible, it's the, it's the order of heaven, then we can order healing on earth. Peace, grace, love, faith, all of that stuff that is inactive or, or is activated in heaven, then we can activate it on earth. If there's no sin and there's no death and there's no dying and there's no greed and envy and jealousy and strife in heaven, then we bind it here on earth. How many of you come on and tell your neighbor it's time to bind and loose? In Jesus' name, whatever God has allowed in heaven, then we must allow it in the earth. Well, whatever God disallows in heaven, we've got to disallow it on earth. Come on and tell somebody again, you got to bind and loose in Jesus' name. So the prayer of faith insists upon the will of God. Hallelujah. It asks that God's will be done. Number two, it is a strong prayer. Hallelujah. It's not weak. It's not double-minded. It doesn't go back and forth with the circumstances. Our prayers ought not to be based on earth's circumstances, but heaven's circumstances. Our prayers are not based upon earth's resources, but heaven's resources. Our, earth, our prayers are not based upon earthly strength, but godly strength. The strength out of the heavens. Somebody say amen. amen. This is what takes us to our text today, and I'm almost uh, done now. But in our text, Jesus gives a parable. To teach us that men should always pray and not give up. 
Though many in here today, many have heard this parable many, many times before. But I want to urge you to listen carefully to me as I share with you what I received from this text. Hallelujah. I want to make it clear the first thing about this parable. This parable is not about the judge. I want you to tell your neighbor this parable is not about the judge. Many of us think that the unjust judge is representing God. And, and, and there is nothing unjust about God. This judge does not represent God. There's nothing unjust about God. There's nothing unfair about God. Many times in our prayer life, we approach God like he's going to harm us, like he's going to be unfair to us, and we got to plead with him to do right by us. Listen, Genesis chapter 18, verse 25, reflected Abraham's conviction. He said this, God, who is the judge of all the earth, will do what is right. Amen. Abraham understood that God is the judge that does what is right. He's higher than the Supreme Court. He's higher than the state Supreme Court or the federal Supreme Court. He is the judge who can always take it to him and he will always do what is right. However, you look to the elect of God next year and say, God will do right by you. So there's nothing unjust about God. And when we go to God, we ought to understand he's not an unjust judge. He's a just judge. He's a righteous God. Secondly, nor is God wanting to withhold goodness and mercy from his people. Luke chapter 12, verse 32 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So first of all, this judge does not represent God. There is nothing unjust about God. God does not want to harm you or to hold out on any good blessing from you. He wants to give you the kingdom. God is not unjust. It is true. But I do know who is unjust. Our adversary, the devil, Lucifer, he is unjust. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy not only is he unjust, Elder Rich, but according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, watch this, he is the prince of the power of the air. Him and his unjust self is the prince of the power of the air, meaning that God has allowed him influence in this world system. And this world operates according to his unjust spirit. He is the prince of the power of the air, which means he is the strong, influential spirit that is working evil and injustice in the world. Amen. Many of the people that we know that are not of the elect of God, that are not saved, and they're acting the way they're acting, they can't help it. Because they are under the influence of the spirit of Israel. There's only two spirits in operation. You all know that. I'm trying to hurry along here. Many people want to say, I'm acting in my own spirit. No, you're not. You're acting under the spirit of God or you're acting under the spirit of the world. Look your neighbor, look him up and down and say, which one do you want to read? The only two. Spirit of God or spirit of the world and, and the spirit of the world is the spirit of, of the devil. And it is that strong, influential spirit yes, it is. that is working this evil and this injustice in the world. And in this parable, we must let the widow represent God's elect. We must let the widow represent us. And we must let the unjust judge represent the works of Satan and his unjust system. Yes. Are you still with me out there? The unjust judge represents Satan and the unjust systems of the world. This parable serves to tell God's elect that the injustice in the world is no match for your prayers. All right, all right. The injustice that we are facing, the injustice or the things that are trying to assail you or trying to hurt you or trying to harm you, they are no match for your prayers. 
no matter what injustice you may be facing, I want to tell you tonight, as I get ready to go to my seat, no matter what injustice you may be facing, continue to pray until you see results. Why do you have the right to say that? Because when I reflect upon Scripture, I can remember when Pharaoh rested his heavy, oppressed hand upon the children of Israel. And the Bible says he laid uh, tasks upon them and laid their burdens greater and greater. Yeah. But they prayed unto their God, until God sent Moses to deliver them. We can look in the book of Acts and see when the early church, uh, hallelujah, in Acts chapter 12, when the early church was being persecuted by the leaders in Jerusalem. The Bible says that they had already killed James, and now they were going to take Peter and kill Peter too. But the Bible says that the church of God made prayers without ceasing unto God for him. And they prayed and they prayed hallelujah until the prison doors were open. I want to remind you again the unjust systems of this world are no match for your prayer. That spirit of infirmity is no match for your prayers. That spirit of strife that is trying to take root or take hold in your family or in your church is no match for your prayers. That stronghold that is coming against your family and your home it is no match for your prayers. Whatever the obstacle, whatever the challenge is, your prayers are greater. I remember the time, hallelujah, oh, when God delivered his people over and over again. Hallelujah, when the apostles were in prison, bound up for doing what was right, preaching the gospel. The Bible declares at midnight when things uh, seemed like they couldn't get any worse, uh, they began to pray and sing praises unto God. Uh, and then pray and sing praises uh, unto God. Uh, it caused even the other prisoners to hear them. Uh, and God set them free. Uh, and all I'm saying to you tonight, uh, as I get ready to go to my seat, uh, Fifth Street Church of God, uh, Resurrection Life Fellowship Church of God, it's time for God's people to loose the prayer of faith on your own. It's time for us to loose the prayer of faith on our marriage. It's time for us to loose the prayer of faith in our community. It's time for us to lose the prayer of faith in our nation. It's time for us to lose the prayer of faith until God sends deliverance. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 declares it like this. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. And all I come to tell you tonight, it's your time to pray. God is calling upon and charging his elect. One more time, this is the time to pray. Don't get caught up in how long you're praying. It may be a short prayer, like the man of God by the name of Hezekiah. He was chosen by God. The prophet came to him and said, your, do you uh, need to set your house in order because you're surely going to die. Hezekiah didn't know what to do, but then again, he did. He turned his face toward the wall. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he said, Lord, I've served you. I've done what you wanted me to do. Lord, I'm asking you to touch me again. The Bible declares that Isaiah, the prophet, had not even left Hezekiah's property yet. He was just out in the courtyard and the Spirit of the Lord told him to turn around and go back to Hezekiah and tell him, I've heard your prayer and I've seen your tears and I'm going to add to your life 15 more years. Sometimes it's a short prayer but God hears that prayer. He sees that you're his elect and he answers.
answers your prayer. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't despise the short prayer. And then again, sometimes, hallelujah, it's a prayer that you have to pray all night. There's a prayer by the man of the name Jacob. The Bible declared that Jacob, hallelujah, prayed and wrestled with God all night night long. One hour would not do it. Two hours would not do it. Three hours would not do it. But he prayed. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go. And there are some times, child of God, that you're going to have to pray with the tenacity. The prayer like Hezekiah may not work this time. You've got to pray with tenacity. You've got to pray with intensity. You've got to pray with passion sometimes. The Bible declares, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. There's some strongholds that you want to have to say, I'm not I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. There's some principalities that you've got to pray with tenacity and with strength all night like Jacob did. And he prayed all night and God blessed him. And then there are some times, Pastor Roll, where it's not just all night, but it's going to be like Moses, where he prayed for 40 days and 40 days nights, day in and day out, praying for the children of Israel, praying and they still misbehaving, praying and they still won't listen, praying and they're still rebelling, praying and it still doesn't change, I know you don't like it, but you got to pray, sometimes you've got to pray, despite not seeing the results, pray, no matter how short, no matter how long, but you've got to pray, Follow the example of Jesus. Jesus prayed. He was the Son of God. 100% God and 100% man. And he prayed. We have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And he prayed. Give your name a high five. I fear not God. 
Lord said, Sister Brenda, the unjust judge said, though I fear not God, and I don't even regard man, but because this woman continues to come to me, I'm going to give her what she's asking for. God is not saying I'm like that. God is saying I'm better than that. God is saying in an unjust judge who doesn't care about God and doesn't care about people will give uh, somebody something that he doesn't even care about. How much more will I avenge? I don't have the time. Somebody say God. 